if you just type negative 1 squared into the calculator, it's going to tell you that the answer is negative 1. Here's why. When you do that, what the calculator interprets that negative sign as is negative 1 times 1 squared. That's how the calculator deals with negative numbers. And then it follows order of operations. So it does the exponent, so it squares the 1, and then it multiplies by the negative. That's why your calculator tells you it's negative 1. So anytime you're squaring a negative number, you've got two choices. Either put parentheses around the negative number before the squares, okay, because positive 1 is the correct answer, or just know that any number squared is going to be positive. Okay? Any number squared is going to be positive. Uh, so really you don't even have to put the negative in there. You know, say you're having to square something more difficult than just squaring 1. Um, just don't even put the negative in there. Alright? So um, it's kind of a little bit of a side lesson, but we need to know that negative 1 squared is positive 1. So that's a negative 3 minus 6. Negative 1 squared is positive 1. Negative 5 times negative 1 is positive 5 plus 1. Now this is not by any means the only way that you can crunch these numbers. This is just kind of how I deal with it. Okay. Um, so we've got 3 times negative 9 minus 1 plus 5 plus 1 is 7. So that's negative 27 minus 7, which is negative 34. Okay, so when there is just a number right here, then your final answer is going to be just a number. Okay, because you're evaluating that linear combination at some value. Now, the last example we're going to look at is what if there's an expression in there? Okay, what if there's an expression? We have negative f of 1 minus 2a. Again, we're not multiplying f by this expression, 1 minus 2a. We are plugging that expression into our f function. And then the same thing for 4g. Now, I hate to keep flip-flopping on you, okay, but in my personal opinion, I think it's easier to do the linear combination part first and then we plug in the 1 minus 2 at the end, and here's why. If we look at f and g, okay, just looking back at those original functions, both of these are quadratics. Meaning, if I plug something in for x, I'm going to have to square it here in f, and I'm going to have to square it in g. Well, if I'm plugging in 1 minus 2a, and that's being squared, what do you have to do to square something like 1 minus 2a? It's not 1 minus 4a squared, I'll tell you that. What do you have to do? You have to foil it. Okay? Anytime you have a binomial squared, you have to foil it out and use the box or whatever method you use. So if I plug it in each of these individually like I did with just a single number, I'm going to have to use foil across it twice, and then I'm going to have to use my right terms. But if I deal with the linear combination part first, then I'm only going to have to deal with that 1 minus 2a. Squaring that, I'm only going to have to square that once. Okay? So here's what I'm talking about. I'm going to focus in on just the linear combination part first. Okay? I'm going to do negative f. And I need to be able to see my function. x squared minus 5x plus 1 plus 4 times g, negative 3x squared minus 6, okay? I'm going to do that part. I'm going to keep this 1 minus 2a kind of in the, in the back of my mind, in my back pocket, and then do that at the end, okay? I'm going to deal with this linear combination. I'm going to simplify this part first. Then I'm going to plug in that 1 minus 2a. So we've got negative x squared plus 5x minus 1 minus 12x squared minus 24. Let's simplify, combine like terms. Negative 13x squared plus 5x 
minus 25. Okay, so now my linear combination, that is negative f plus 4g. Okay, that is that simplified. But that wasn't the whole problem, okay? The whole problem said I need to plug in 1 minus 2x. So in this expression, everywhere I see an x, I'm going to replace it with 1 minus 2x. So we've got negative 13 times 1 minus 2a squared plus 5 times 1 minus 2a minus 25. Okay, now this is what I was just talking about a second ago. 1 minus 2a squared is not 1 minus 4a squared. Okay, and I'm going to write it out uh, this time so that you know 1 minus 2a squared, I got to do 1 minus 2a times 1 minus 2a. That's what it means to square something. You multiply it by itself. I'm going to go ahead and distribute the 5 to the 1 minus 2a, and then we've got minus 25 there on the end. I'm going to FOIL 1 minus 2a times 1 minus 2a, so that's 1 minus 4a plus 4a squared. If you need to do that in two steps, that is fine. I'm just trying to conserve space here. And at the end, I'm going to start writing it in standard form, so I'm going to put the minus 10a first, and I'm going to go ahead and combine the 5 minus 25 to give me negative 20. All right, two steps left, okay? Distribute the negative 13. So negative 13 times 1 is negative 13. Negative 13 times negative 4 is positive 52a. Negative 13 times positive 4a squared is negative 52a squared. And then my last two terms don't change. Final step. Put it all together, negative 52a squared. Uh, 52 minus 10 is 42, positive 42a. And negative 13 minus 20 is negative 33. Okay. That one's kind of lengthy, but... Uh, Part of free calculus is being able to persevere through long enough and two step problems. Okay? Um, but if you handle it systematically, it's not really that bad. Okay? Deal with the linear combination first, simplify that completely, then plug in the expression that they're asking you to plug in. So that's going to make life a lot easier because you're only going to have to deal with this part. You're going to have to deal with this. You're only going to have to deal with that once as opposed to twice. Any questions?